you think things are going well with your woman, then out of nowhere she says, We need to end this, Kyle. Maybe you've tried getting your woman back with no success and you are not sure why. You need to understand that at different ages and phases of life, women respond differently to what they find attractive and how they will behave with you. A 33-year-old woman will want you to show her you are willing to commit and provide, whereas an 18-year-old is likely to place more importance on looks and exploring her options. In this video, you will gain an understanding of the phases of a woman's life, you will gain more power over your dating life, waste less time, and become better at attracting and keeping your dream women or woman. This is a book summary of The Rational Male Preventative Medicine by Rollo Tomasi. Part 1. Understanding Hypergamy Hypergamy is the instinctual desire of a woman to get the best possible mate that she can get. Hypergamy is made up of the good genes aspect and the good father aspect. Women want the most genetically attractive partner they can get. The second is the good father aspect. They also want a man who sticks around and has resources to share with her and her children. But rarely do these characteristics appear in the same man. Men who are good looking and can sleep with a lot of women don't have the incentive to stick around, while men who are willing to provide aren't necessarily attractive. Men with both of these qualities are rare. Therefore, some researchers have suggested women have evolved a dualistic sexual strategy. Over evolutionary time, women may have maximized reproductive success by doing two things simultaneously. Seeking good genes by mating with someone other than her primary partner during ovulation, and maintaining a long-term pair bond with a partner who provides resources for the children. In simple terms, she coops up with Winston, but bangs Chad. Keep watching because at the end of part 3, you will learn how to help prevent your woman from banging Chad. But first, you must understand biological hypergamy the ovulatory shift. There is a multitude of scientific studies that indicate that a woman's sexual preference for facial characteristics shifts depending on her menstrual phase. When women ovulate, they prefer masculine faces, faces with features that indicate high levels of testosterone, like wide faces, beards, and defined jawlines. Men with high levels of testosterone indicate good genes because only men with good genes could afford the taxing effects testosterone has on the immune system. And, fun fact, high rates of testosterone are associated with high rates of offspring abandonment. At other points during the cycle, women prefer feminine male faces, as they might signal a higher willingness of the males to invest in offspring. So what does this mean for men? Well, now that we know about hypergamy and that women desire the best genes during ovulation, ask yourself, how would this affect your relationship with your partner? Can you accept the fact that she has an instinctual desire to trade up with a good-looking alpha male during ovulation? If this makes you uncomfortable, embrace the discomfort. Know that in theory, no woman who sees you as her hypergamous best interest will want to cheat on you. That's why it's important to never stop becoming 1% better. The trap so many men fall into is they get into a relationship. After a few months, they stop going to the gym, they become lazy, and delude themselves that their woman will love them forever for who they are. Let's move on to part 3, where you will learn the phases of a woman's life which will help you identify a partner who is less likely to bang Chad. The woman's maturation timeline describes how the situations and behaviours of women change based on what phase of life they're in. The first phase is the formative years, ages 15 to 25. Women in this age range highly value the looks of men. An introverted shy guy can be perceived as an attractive alpha male if his looks are on point. Other factors like status, confidence, and game, while beneficial, are valued less due to the fact that a young girl lacks real experience of a guy with game, social savvy, or a real need for provisioning. Phase 2 is the break, when women are at the end of their late teens. At the start of women's college lives, they are inclined to end their relationship with their high school sweetheart and enjoy their newfound options because their sexual market value is at its highest. A common trap men fall into during this phase is committing to a long distance relationship with their woman because they or their partner have to move away for university. That or they change their careers so that they can attend the same university as their woman only to be broken up with after a few months because she is inclined to explore her options. Phase 3 are the party years, woohoo! Ages 20 to 25. 
In this phase, women have boatloads of sexual options. The physical looks she prioritized in high school will remain the top attraction priority. However, as she matures and gains new experiences, wealth and status will also become important factors for attraction. In phase four, we enter the epiphany, which is ages 28 to 30. Women become more aware of their declining looks and their diminishing ability to compete with younger women. They feel more urgency to lock in a male partner with superior genes who will also stick around to provide. Where is this going? Is the most common question a man will be asked during this phase. She might stop having sex with you or threaten to break up if she doesn't feel that you would get down on one knee for her. Phase five, the transitory phase, ages 29 to 31. She is anxious that she'll never find a suitable long-term mate. Feminine social conventions allay women's anxieties and pressure men to settle down with them. That's why you hear some women say, men should date women their age. Men are shallow for ignoring single mothers. Men feel threatened by successful women. On to phase six, security, from ages 31 to 34. If women have not secured a suitable partner, they have two options. One, continue to look for a partner that fulfills both alpha attraction and beta provisioning as their looks decline further. Or, settle for a partner with less value than her who can't provide alpha genes but can provide long-term security and provisioning. As women continue to age in their 30s, wealth, provisioning capacity, and status become the primary attractive traits to them. Women in this phase are the toughest to date because of the heavy desire for you to commit and entitlement. I'm more valuable than those younger girls, she tells herself. A mixture of feminism, her achievements, and fear of losing her value manifests as entitlement. Men are repelled and the high value ones are dating the younger girls, so she is left with little options. Phase seven, redevelopment, ages 40 to 48. A new alpha reinterest begins to emerge. While security may still be an important concern for her, she turns her attention to the excitement she used to enjoy with her past alpha lovers. And finally, phase eight, late phase security, ages 48 plus. Her primary desire is security and provisioning as her appearance decays. Now, as promised, to decrease the likelihood of your woman banging Chad, you have two main options. Number one is to ditch her and date a woman aged 28 to 34 and 48 plus because they'll be in a phase where they value long-term beta provisioning more than short-term alpha fun. The obvious drawback is that you may settle for a woman whose youthful beauty is declining quickly. Not to mention breaking up with her could be a poor choice if you are implementing option number two, which is to commit to becoming 1% better every day so you can increase and maintain high value as a man. High value and consistently bringing excitement into her life will encourage her, or even them, to stick around for you. The ideas I shared with you from this book are Rollo's observations based on over 15 years of discussion of thousands of men's experiences with women. But Rollo still encourages you to seek truth for yourself. I'll leave you with a final piece of wisdom from Rollo Tomasi himself. With a healthy understanding, respect, and awareness of what influences his condition, a man can overcome and thrive within the context of them. But he must first be aware of and accepting of the conditions in which he operates and maneuvers. You may not be able to control the actions of others. You may not be able to account for women's hypergamy, but you can be prepared for them. You can protect yourself from the consequences of them and you can live a better life no matter your demographic, age, past regrets or present circumstances. Let's recap. In part one, you learn that hypergamy is the instinctual desire for a woman to get the best possible mate that she can get. In part two, you learn that a woman during ovulation is likely to find alpha male traits more attractive than beta male traits. And in part three, you learn the different phases of a woman's life and how it affects their behavior and preferences in a mate.